This question pops up quite a bit and last time I checked there wasn't anything on YouTube for manually programming the TYT THUV8200 radio so we're going to quickly run through that right now. I've never done it before so this is also a first for me. Uh, however, it probably is a handy skill to have if you're away from your computer, even if you are used to computer programming, which is the much better way to do this, especially if you want to put alphanumeric names on your channels to make them easier to find. Also now, it's worth noting that um, although the OEM software that comes with it for free from TYT is functional and works uh, under Windows, uh, with the generic prolific cable that sometimes causes problems with the driver set that RT Systems last month, uh, we're early 2018 here right now, released uh, software for this model and it works with their K4Y cable which uh, is the same cable that's used with all the other Chinese radios so if you already have RT system software for another radio you don't need to buy a new cable. So to get started with uh, programming this thing, the first thing, uh, we're, we're assuming that you want to hit a repeater somewhere and you have gathered the appropriate information that's required to hit that repeater and the information that you're going to need is shown here, hopefully you can read that and um, so for our analog repeater this evening that I'm looking at, the info that I gathered that is required for it is it is a narrowband repeater which most are these days uh, in fact it's required by law in the US for all government repeaters that they be narrowband now well, however if you're going to be going to some legacy area where they've had a repeater for years such as Campbell Glacier then that would probably be wideband so uh, the band narrow or wide you will need that information and if it is narrow it'll be 12.5 you're going to need your receive frequency and you will also need your transmit frequency and you will need the tone code if one is required. Most repeaters again these days do require a tone code because the operator doesn't like having every Tom, Dick and Harry that's coming along on the highway below tripping his repeater when they are on that frequency. It's Think of it like a key that you need to open the door when you go home uh, and you haven't left your doors unlocked and then you'll have to do some math to calculate because it's going to ask you for an offset and you're going to need to know if that offset is positive or negative and that is determined by the direction from the receive frequency that the transmit frequency is in in other words if the transmit frequency is a higher number than the receive frequency it will be a positive offset and you will just deduct the RX from the TX and in this case you see here 167.565 you take away from that 164.985 and you end up with a positive offset of 2.58. So that's the information that we're going to be working with. And then we will turn back to the manual, which isn't the greatest, but it has its use, and go on to page 18. And this gives you all the menu settings and where you have to go to do the various functions. And notice that there's a menu for VFO mode and a menu for memory channel and channel mode. We will be working with VFO mode when we want to program the radio. So when you get started and you turn the radio on, you will be in um, memory channel mode, which looks like that. There's a channel number on the display on the lower right hand side and small numbers there. So you need to uh, toggle the radio over into VFO mode by a quick press of the lower right hand button that has the pound symbol on it. And that toggles you into VFO mode. And now the, there might be any number at all showing there. That's irrelevant. Uh, just take whatever's there and enter your receive frequency of, in my case, 164.985. One, and then hit OK. It automatically puts the decimal place in there. So now in our VFO we have our RX frequency in there already and now what I'm going to want to do is put in the other parameters of wide or narrow and the tone code. So we will now go into the menu. menu. 
I'm going to use the up arrow to go to utilities. I'm going to hit OK and then I'm going to go to uh, look up here and I've looked it up offset and first of all the direction that's number 23 and then we're going to go to 24 to put the actual offset in so we're going to go to 23 and put a positive in and again I go up to utilities hit OK I go to 23 I hit OK and then I move the blue band to positive and hit OK now I've got a positive offset I hit OK now I'm going to move down to 24 I'm going to hit OK again that puts me into offset and then I will put in a 2 and hit OK and now I'm going to dial to up to 2.58 there's my 2.5 set offset I hit OK. Now there might be a way to get the decimal place in uh, without having to toggle it like I just did because I'm new to this. Um, I just did it the uh, old guy way to get it over and done. And now I'm also uh, with the old guy memory but I still think we need to put our tone code in, do we not? Now tone encoding, tone decoding, it becomes a bit of a conundrum for people when they're getting started generally especially for backcountry use uh, you generally do not need tone decode so um, just avoid putting it in your radio if you need tone decode you probably know that you need it and you know why you need it which would be because you're working in a facility and every time you get near a cash point machine or an elevator all the squelch takes off on your radio your squelch circuit opens from the electronics that's in the elevator or around the cash register uh, or if you're working in the city um, but when you're in the backcountry it's very unlikely that your transceiver or your digital camera or your GPS is going to cause that interference and uh, requiring you to have tone decode or uh, the other reason you have tone decode is privacy you won't hear a bunch of other people chatting like they are on bubble pack radios so uh, I've had a lot of people get into grief with tone decode so I would recommend don't worry about it that means then we're going to want encode in and the encode menu I see here number 27 and that's TX tone coder is what the Chinese call it so I'm going to go to 27 and put that tone in so I'm going to go to menu I'm going to go up to utilities I'm going to go to 27 and then I'm going to go OK and then I'm going to toggle down and you remember the tone code I wanted was 151.4 you select it by you got to be quick about this because it doesn't give you very long um, what did we say 27 and TX and then you just move the blue band with your top, with your button on the top when you get to the one you want in this case 151.4 hit OK Enter. and then you can go Escape. back out and now we have got this you can see the plus button here which means that we do have a plus offset if you hit the push to talk button you will see 167.565 and that's what it shows there so we know that's correct and um, we're gonna double check and make sure that our squelch level is around 3 which is what we Thank want and Thank under you. utilities we go to uh, 0 4 for squelch and you select your squelch level there 3 is what I want hit OK and go back and now what we're going to want to do is save this repeater channel that we've just programmed in here into a memory channel because we're still in VFO mode which means we're in the scratch pad which means that's our working area um, it retains what's ever in there until we come along and we need to do something else in our scratch pad so we're going to permanently store this into a memory channel when I was editing the video I realized that I indeed forgot to go and set the bandwidth to narrow and so we're going to quickly run through 
how we would do that in the menu, although you've probably got that figured out by now. Menu, menu we go to utilities, we hit OK, Enter. and then for bandwidth, we will turn to the manual and find out which menu that is on, and that is where do we find that? We look along. Offset wide narrow is 29, and so we're going to go to channel memory channel Escape. 29. Menu. Utilities Enter. hit 29 and hit O. No, it's not. Uh, wide narrow. V oh, the problem is we were not in VFO Escape. mode. Escape. See, we were in memory channel mode. So we're going to toggle over to VFO mode. I guess that was a good exercise. Menu. And we go back to utilities, Enter. and now we go to 29, and indeed we are a wide and narrow band. Enter. Now we use our toggle button to go between wide and narrow, and we select narrow, hit OK. Enter. It says wide and narrow, it confirms we're on narrow, Escape. and we go back, and now we're going back to memory channel mode, and there we are, we're on narrow band, and that's confirmed. And now we're going to move on and show how we will store the VFO information into this memory channel. So it took me a little way to find how to get it stored into a memory channel. I had to hunt around a little bit and it was like throwing myself against a wall in a dark room till I found the doorway. Uh, it turns out that uh, it's not under utility where I was looking to start with. So again, we're in VFO mode here. And again, you know your VFO mode. There's no channel number on the lower right where I'm pointing where there is on the other one. Uh, 15 second timeout is frustrating. And so you go into menu, menu and you go down to channel storage. And then you hit OK. Store. And then it's going to ask you for your channel number. I'll go uh, 001. Zero, zero. Error. Uh, didn't like that. Two. 200. I'm going to go back. Escape. I'm going to try again. Door. I'll try one. one. Let's hit OK. Error. Channel exists. Replace it. Hit Enter. OK. Storage success. And now we're going to go back. Escape. Escape. And we're still in VFO mode, mind you. And let's just see what is on. Oh, I see on my bottom channel here, channel 514. Um, well, somehow we managed to also put that into channel 514, which is uh, minus plus 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 minus 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 plus. Yeah, it beats me. Plus, plus, but anyway, minus. I have managed to get that repeater into channel number one now, as we can see. And when I hit the push to talk, I do see that I am. In fact, transmitting on the offset. And I guess the last thing would be to check and make sure that the tone encode is working. So that demonstration was just to quickly show how to enter a repeater. You could also use that same procedure where we started out with the RX just to put in a simplex channel and uh, you could add narrow or wide band or tone coat even to a simplex channel although that is not normally going to happen. Now that you know how to use the menu system you can go through and adjust all these other settings as you may wish. Um, change the backlight setting to 15 as recommended. <clears throat> you could change your brightness setting. You can turn on that voice prompt on and off and um, so on and so forth uh, as you 
progress and you require things to be changed, you just come back here and find out where it is and then you can change it accordingly. Um, for example, if you're having trouble getting some of those last finer digits in, especially in cases when maybe you're doing animal telemetry where the last decimal point has to be uh, tuned to a one, two, three, four, or five, and then you would go down to the lowest frequency stepping that you can get in there by using this VFO step parameter. And remember, all these are what shows up in your menu when you are in VFO mode. When you're in memory channel mode, the menu system gives you more options for different parameters that you can set, and those are found here on page 21 of your manual. And um, some are overlapping, like backlight and brightness, but there's other things that uh, may be different there. So be aware of that, and then you can go from there.